Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. It is Friday, September the 4th. It is Labor Day weekend. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And it's a football Friday, man. We are ready to rock and roll. We we are not touching on any trending topics. We ain't talking shit about the Big Ten. We ain't talking about nothing crazy. We are going to do some NFL previews today, getting ready for the NFL season, which will begin in less than a week. Like We finally got to this point, Chris. We are here, and we are ready to rock and roll. Before we get started with that, anybody that is watching live, you obviously know that you can get in on Periscope, Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube, and... With that, you can join in the chat. You can jump in the chat box down in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Whatever platform that you are on, you can jump into the chat, and it will dive in and populate right there in on the video. So you can be a part of the show forever and ever and ever, as long as we have a channel. So go ahead and dive into the chat. You can help drive the narrative. You can help drive the story and the conversation for the day. Uh, Today, like I said, AFC East, NFC East, we will be discussing quite a bit. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. are over there. Uh, look, this is the first week of college football. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we will be doing our live college football show, Closing Line Show, discussing all the moves and whatnot that has happened over the week, previewing some of the games that are coming up for the first weekend of college football. We had actual... Real life football last night. Chris, did you watch the Golden Eagles and the Jaguars last night, or did you watch the Blazers and the Bears of Central uh, Arkansas? I watched UAB. I watched Bill Clark. I uh, I don't blame you. That was it, anybody that saw that. Good gracious, uh, UAB should have beat the absolute brakes off of them. And instead, when you give the other team drives of zero, four, and fifteen yards for touchdowns, um, it, it can get a little squirrely. So, <laughs> turnovers turnovers cost you games all the time. Hey, I'll tell you this. I think we're going to see a whole lot of messy, disgusting kind of football, football games. Yeah, we're going to yeah, see I, a lot of that this year. So from, from both sides, professional and, oh yeah, from and everybody. college. So just be ready. Just be ready. Like we, we don't like betting favorites anyway, but that's the kind of thing that can cost you a, a, a big time, you know, a big time spread there. So anyway, uh, with that said, we'll dive off. Make sure you go over to the SBR YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed. We're going to dive into the live show again Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time. Make sure that you are there. Get your popcorn. We're going to have a good, good time. That'll be every Saturday going forward. And then our opening line show will come out on Monday. We will be live on Tuesday afternoons at 5.30. And then starting next week, we'll be live at 5.30 on Thursday afternoon. Um, So, yeah. So, basically, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will be at sportsbookreview.com and sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF doing our college football stuff over there. But all of our NFL stuff is going to be right here. We're doing our picks next week. We will figure out what day works best. It might be Wednesday. We'll just see. We'll see what happens. But uh, but we'll figure that out as we go. But the NFL season starts next week, and we are ready to dive in to the AFC East, and we are going to kick this thing off with the Buffalo Bills. That sound right to you, Chris? Come on. All right. Ten and six last year. Their win total for this season is set at nine. Now, this we're going to use Heritage today. Uh, win total is nine. To go over is minus 120. To go under is plus 100. So, even odds. At, so, they expect a winning season. They, they expect to go over the nine as opposed to under. To win the division, plus 110. They are the favorites this year. And it has been a long, long time since we have had somebody other than the New England Patriots as a, a favorite in this division. Uh, now, that doesn't mean anything right now. Obviously, this is just preseason. But Sean McDermott, entering his fourth season, has completely turned this franchise around, and it is impressive what he has done. Now, what he hasn't done is really, really improve that offense just yet. Uh, let's go through some of the numbers right quick. Offensive yards per play, 5.2 last year. That was good for number 22 in the league. Defensive yards per play, however, and that's what they have built their entire foundation on. 4.9 is what they gave up last year. That's number four in the NFL. Turnover margin, 
not too shabby. Not too shabby. They gained .2 turnovers per game. That was number 11 in the conference. Um, the questions that I have really are, do we trust Josh Allen? And and that's, I think, the biggest question of all. That is the one thing that can turn them from, you know, uh, they might make the playoffs into, oh, they might be able to make the Super Bowl. Because we know that that defense is good enough. They have finally got a big play threat. They bring in Diggs from Minnesota. And he, from all accounts, everything I've read uh, read out of training camp, he looks to be unbelievable. Um, Josh Norman signed a one-year deal to uh, to kind of help shore up that secondary. That was really the only weak link that they had last year, and it really wasn't even a weak link. You know, and Josh Norman, it, more so he's just adding like a veteran leadership, right? Because he yeah, he's, not, he's not cover cornering anymore. Yeah, he, he's not the same Josh Norman that we knew just a few years ago. That's right. But, uh, but he is a veteran, and he is a leader, and... I think he will be good for what they're doing. Um, I mean, bottom line, the defense is where it's at. I'm going to tell you, my prediction is 10-6, and six, and that's only because I just don't know about Josh Allen, but I know that they are good enough to to at least get to 10-6 and six again. Um, you know, not a, not a ridiculous schedule, but I think it's still a fairly difficult schedule. Uh, I think 10-6 and six is, is good, and I think, it's, I think it's good enough to win the division, uh, but I'm not going to make that call just yet. So yeah, I got him ten and six as well. Listen, that offense added Zach Moss, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, good running game, good strong running game. I trust them. Yes. Good offensive line. Uh, I think Josh Allen will be much improved this year because of Stephon Diggs. But I think they're going to be a better football team this year than they were last year. But that doesn't equate to wins all the time because the teams they beat, I think they would still beat. The team they would lose to, I think they would still lose to. Yes. Um, it, it, it's going to come down to can they play big in the playoffs because I absolutely have this team making the playoffs once again. So, um, yeah, I got them 10 and 6 as well. I think Josh Allen's going to be better. I think Stefan Diggs is going to help that. Stefan Diggs' catch radius on the deep ball is massive. Yes. You don't have to be gigantic person to have a good catch radius, all right? He tracks the ball in the air better than any receiver in the league right now. Oh, and, and his adjustments to that's, the ball well, that's, are That's what I'm saying. Track, yeah. Tracking the football is important when you have a quarterback that can sling it but is not accurate because he's not overthrowing you or underthrowing you. He's just off on the throw, and therefore you have to find the ball and go to it. And Stefan Diggs, it, the reason they paid a first-round pick for him and then are going to have to pay him financially again is because he is the best player in the NFL right now that does that. Yeah, I think you're, they, I think you're and right. They know they need that. they got to play to the strengths and the weaknesses of the team that they've got. Yes, I agree. Now, with that said, let's move into the Miami Dolphins. And look, not great last year. 5-11, and 11, but that was actually exceeding expectations. Very much so. So, not not too shabby. Their win total this year is six. And to go over, it is juiced at minus 135. To go under is plus 115. So, they expect some more good things from Brian Flores and this team. Brian Flores entering his second season. And, look, they, they sold the farm last year. I mean, they just got rid of everybody that was any good other than other than Devontae Parker. Um, yeah, to win the division, they are plus 825. So, we're not quite to that point just yet. And... It, it may still be a few years before they get to that. Going through some of the numbers, offensive yards per play, 4.9. That was number 29 in the league. Defensive yards per play, uh, 6.0. That was number 30 in the league. Turnover margin, they gave up the ball 0. .6 times per game. That was number 27. And you look at these numbers, and you're like, how in the world did they win five games last year? I mean, it was unbelievable. Now, early in the season, they were dreadful, and they got better. They absolutely got better. This Here's, is why you have to throw some of those stats out the window. Some of those stats yeah. don't matter because the team at the end of the season weren't wasn't close to that that team that was playing so badly at the beginning. Agreed. Uh, agreed. And that's where so many of those stats you just get so far far behind you can't ever catch up. Oh yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. The question here is: Does uh, Fitzpatrick start all year, or does Tua end up getting a chance to build chemistry with Devontae Parker and the rest of those wide receivers? Uh, they brought in running backs Jordan Howard and Matt Breda. Um, they made Cowboys cornerback Byron Jones the highest-paid cornerback in the NFL. 
gave him a five-year, $82 million deal, which is absurd. Um, and then they brought in linebacker Kyle Van Noy. And, you know, from the Pats, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a stat that you may not have known. Uh, Kyle is 29 years old. And you and I think of that as a young man, right? Mm, okay. He is the second. Not in football. He is the second oldest player on this team. Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah. is 37. 30, 30 years old in the NFL is, is pretty damn old, considering Agreed. the average lifespan of a football player is only three years, three and a half years, and Agreed. these guys come into the league at 24. That would mean everybody is, for the most part, done by 27. To reach the, 30 is massive. Ag- agreed, agreed. But there are there's a veteran leadership on the majority of teams, right? I, I would say. You've, okay, you've got yes. some guys that are 31, 32, 33, whatever. It, it, yeah. Guys play into their mid-30s fairly regularly, uh, especially quarterbacks and whatever else, and, and really the quarterbacks of your defense and whatever else. So you do have some older guys. The fact that this guy is 29 years old and will be this season – and he is the second oldest guy on the team. They got a young roster, man. They brought in a bunch of rookies this offseason. They've got a bunch of young dudes. Um, it's still going to take some time. I think they are getting closer. I like what they did last year. They obviously improved. They advanced. They progressed. Whatever kind of cliche word you want to use. I think they are a a decently good football team. They just don't have all of the pieces put together just yet. I've got them at seven and nine. I think I was insanely generous. Um, I mean, to see them maybe, it, obviously the win total is six for a reason, but with it being juiced at minus 135 on the over, obviously they think it's more likely that they win seven as opposed to five. Um, I've got them at seven and nine, and, and the schedule helps a little bit. Obviously, they, you know, they got a last play schedule. I, I kind of like this team. I think it's going to take some time to build them in, but man, um, uh, give, me, give me your thoughts here. I've got them at, at 6 and 10. I got them right on the number. And uh, and I think that's pretty close to right. I think they'll be a game better than last year. Brian Flores is a real coach. He's he's going to be the first coach, in my opinion, to come out of the Nick Saban, uh, the Bill Belichick uh, coaching tree that's actually good, that's actually belongs in the NFL as a head coach. I was very worried that I thought that he got his job a little earlier and, and he, and he took a job too soon. I was very er- worried that he went to Miami, um, in a place that had just been bad for a long time and wasn't really well ran. Uh, they seem to have fixed a lot of those issues and uh, I like the way they're building this team. They're going young and, uh, and I'm okay with that. You got to hit on the quarterback at some point in time. Fitz Fitzpatrick's got to stop playing and, and uh, our Fitzgerald, sorry, has got to stop playing, and then Tua's got to be able to show something. I know that his first couple of weeks in camp, there were reports that were, this is awful, but he's just now learning to run and take hits and move around again after major hip surgery, and so there's got to be some growing pine from that. He seems to have improved a lot from that getting just more comfortable with the team. I don't even think it's the team though. I think it's just getting more comfortable playing football. If there's any hesitation in him at all because of the injury that he took, he's never going to come back for him from it. He's just, he's just yeah. not. And we won't know that in practice ever because he's never going to practice without a red shirt on. I personally would not start him at all this year. If they start off zero and seven, zero and eight, I still wouldn't do it. I know that there are going to be people clamoring for it. I know that there's going to be an ownership that's probably clamoring for it. But I would stay the course and say, let's give him an entire year to learn the NFL, practice against real NFL defenses that we're practicing in in, in camp and on our, on our own team every week, hold the clipboard. It's not a knowledge thing. It's not a learning the throws thing. He just has to be comfortable because if he goes out there on Sundays and he's not ready, it's not the hip that's going to re-get hurt. But guys that play timid get hurt constantly. Oh, and yeah. it's the You're next right. injury. It's the ACL getting blown out. Or it's falling on the shoulder wrong. It's There's a million things that can happen to your body when you are afraid. Um, and and I, I think that's the worst thing that could happen to him. So I, I agree. I agree. Now their their success in the future is a hundred percent tied to him. Um, so at some point in time next year, 
they got to put up, shut up. They got to know, is he the guy or not? Because you can't, you can't waste three, four years on him. His whole rookie deal is done and you still don't know. So I definitely think by next year, there's no other plan B. You don't bring anybody else in. You just bring nothing but capable backups and they have to understand the role. You don't need anybody pushing him. Because if next year doesn't work, you basically have quote unquote from a front office level tanked for three years. And in the NFL, you've basically tanked players entire career. Yeah, no, you're right. You can't do that. Uh, Matt Miller on YouTube uh, said, doing the two worst divisions of football today, I see. Uh, And then Matt Miller said, Tua will never have as good of a receiving core in the NFL as he did at Alabama. That will take time to get used to as well. Yeah. Or a running game. Hey, I want to bring back something about, uh, you talked about the, uh, the big time cornerback that got paid in Miami. Yeah. We didn't talk about him for Buffalo. Trey White just is just licking his chops every time. He is without question the best cover corner in all the football. And cornerbacks this offseason have gotten paid. Oh, yeah. And I think he is just counting. But if I'm Buffalo, brother, you you better be freeing up some cheese because this guy's going to demand it. And he he has every right to because he is worlds better than these other guys getting paid. I, I think worlds you are better than them. I think you're 100 percent right. The, the fact that Byron Jones has an 82 million dollar contract, <laughs> Trey, is, Trey Trey's gonna walk in and say double it, <laughs> and he'd be so worth I'm it. Gonna need, I'm gonna need it doubled right now. He would absolutely be worth it. Uh, I think he's worth it. But, ben jumps in on uh, on Twitch. He said he could become a Sam Bradford if uh, the Dolphins aren't careful. He talked about Tua. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then Matt said uh, Miami might have the best cornerback duo, though, with Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Maybe. Ooh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think the boys in New England are going to I, I like Buffalo gonna gonna have something to say about that. Yeah. Buffalo's going to have something. This division's going to have something to say about the cornerbacks. The two good teams are going to have something to say about the secondary being better than everybody else. Yeah, you, you got that right. You got that right. All right, with that said, why don't we go ahead and hop into your boys? Let's Let's discuss. Let's go up to uh, the Northeast here, and let's talk about the New England Patriots. 12-4 and four last year, and, and my God, if you would listen to people talking about it, you would have thought they went 6-10. and 10, Holy but, crap, I know. The ceiling fell in. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, oh, my God, they only won 12 games out of 16. Win, winning 12 games is a bad season. That's their, uh, their win total right now is set at 9, and it is plus 105. To go over and minus 125 to go under to win the division, they are plus 140. Coach Bill Belichick enters his 21st season as the head coach. I mean, there are kids that are graduating college that have been, uh, they were born the year that Belichick started in New England. That's before, like, all the, just ridiculous, right? So, this year is going to be the Cam Newton show. I don't know why people were very uh, surprised that he was announced the starter. I think as soon as he was signed, everybody kind of figured that. So long as he was healthy, he was going to be their best option. But uh, but the question is, can he stay healthy? My other question is, man, they got like 87 running backs on this roster. And I, We've said this every year, and I know. it frustrates the hell out of me. They, <laughs> they, draft, they draft some offensive lineman at a position and then try to make him play a position he doesn't play all the time, and it drives me insane. But the offensive line is always pretty good. And and then they and they always just keep drafting more running backs, and they don't get any wide receivers ever. Well, they I mean, they, just, so so they've got they've got uh, uh, J, what, the White. Harry, they, 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 no, no, they no, they've, they've got James a, White. I'm talking okay. about the running backs. You're they've got Damian backs. Harris, who everybody talked really nice about in uh, in the preseason, yep. uh, in camp and whatnot. They've got Sony Michelle, who took a a lot of carries last year. They've got Rex Burkhead. They've got and now. They they went and signed Lamar Miller. Like, yeah, but they got him for nothing. They I signed Lamar agreed. Miller because he's cheap. But I mean, <laughs> just because he's cheap, that's, I don't, that's like my wife telling right. me that hang a sale on, listen, means she saved but, money. I know. I I <laughs> hang on. I agree with you. By the way, here's the insane that they tried to go get Leonard Fournette. They were I like, know. "Hey, Leonard's available. Let's go get another one of these bastards." I don't I don't understand it. Listen, I'm never going to question Bill. But I don't always understand, Bill. I don't know that when you have a 53-man roster, that is a very hard roster to fill, okay? You cut down things so difficult. He has like six running backs all the time. Everybody else is carrying maybe four, 
And and then they just have a couple of receivers that can take the rock if they had to. But, and usually he has a lot of guys that are like very versatile. Okay, like James White, we we basically move out into the slot. Like he plays, we run two slot receivers constantly. It's just bounce James White out into the slot and nobody behind the backup. None of these other guys can do any of that. I don't yeah, know. Rex I, I don't get is pretty good at catching the football. Nobody else in this backfield has shown that they are good at catching the football. Yeah, it, it's insane. Tony Michelle in the Super Bowl against the Rams over under for catches in a game was one and a half. I took the over thinking he's going to get at least two because they can't just run it every time he's in and throw it every time James is in or else the defense knows what they're doing. No. No, he had one ball thrown to him. He dropped it. Tom did throw it to him. Really the game. I don't know what the hell to do. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I, I don't understand it. Uh, jumping into the chat here, uh, Matt Miller said, the Pats are no better than 8-8. Eight eight. Chris, don't be drinking that Boston Kool-Aid. They are so insane. And then, well, he said it, he put an asterisk and then put 9-7. and seven. Uh, no, Carlos insane. Gomez said, uh, and no Muhammad uh, uh, Sanu either. Mohamed Sanu was trash last year. Yeah. Mohamed Sanu was just trash like, all last year. He most certainly was. Uh, Bill Belichick. Bill treats- Dorsett was the best wide receiver on that team last year. Yeah. From the from the time the season started to the time the year ended, Julian missed too much time and, and, and took some time to get ready, whatever. Sanu was just garbage. Nikhil Harry wasn't close to ready, and Tom just doesn't like rookies. It, Philip Dorsett, and he's not on the team anymore. Yep. Correct. Matt Miller said, Bill Belichick treats running backs like some people treat Hondas. Just get three or four accords with 200,000 miles and run them till they die. Damn straight. That Hang on. That it might be the best, the best scenario ever of him. The fact that he used a first-round pick on Sony was insane to me because you just don't pay a lot for Hondas. Like, why yeah. go get a new one? Just just buy six used ones, keep them across the garage, the, 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 the driveway, and and you'll never have a car, you know, be without a car. Yeah, a good because they'll run forever. They'll like, just go forever. Yeah, they'll just keep going. Um, so, so hey, defensive issue, the def- by the way. Yeah, defense. Uh, the biggest issue last year really was the secondary, not a massive issue. No, nah, um, be fine. But they they signed Aiden Phillips or Adrian Phillips, and they signed uh, Cody Davis. Now the biggest problem they got right now is all the opt outs, right? Like that's that's kind of a problem. And and so, then they lose Kyle Van Oy, and that's you know, eh. So I'm going to address the opt-outs. I've listened to enough New England beat writer talk lately. Now, I will tell you this. So for all the fans out there that that hate the Patriots and all this stuff, that's fine. Y'all can all suck it, but that's fine. I, I understand it, by the way. I do understand it. I It doesn't help you, but I understand it. Here's the deal. The beat writers in Boston 100% do not suck up to the team the way other states do, the way oh, no. other teams do. No, 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 no. They go in there, and they are looking for problems constantly. It's just the Boston way of doing things. They're always negative. And I'm going to tell you, these guys say Bill is not worried about the opt-outs, and they think Bill and Kurt – because if you look at all the opt-outs, they're all the older veteran guys. Oh, yeah. And Bill thinks these younger guys are better, and he'd rather not have to pay those veterans. Damien jumps in on YouTube. He said, Cam Newton isn't a starting quarterback, in my opinion. He's not even a good quarterback. All he can do good is wear Victoria's Secret or be a Victoria's Secret model. Damien, if Cam Newton had gone to the Bears, you would be jumping out of your skin right now. Okay? <laughs> we would be building a shrine to Ryan Pace right now if he had gone and gotten Cam Newton for one million dollars. Yep. Yep, you are correct. So I do not want to hear somebody whose quarterbacks are the combined of Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky talking yang about my boy Cam, all right? (laughs) We're going to stop that right now. Listen, Cam is a dark horse MVP candidate this year. If you don't have a little bit of money sprinkled on Cam, you're just a fool because if you think it cannot happen because of your hate for the Patriots or your dislike for Cam, you're an idiot. Now, it might not happen. But if he's healthy for 16 games and the wizard of Josh McDaniels gets to pull the strings and call plays he has never gotten to call before, ever, then then I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's going to be a really good shot that people would rather give it to Cam than give it to a Drew Brees or a, or a Deshaun Watson or a Mahomes back-to-back or a, or a Lamar back-to-back. They would rather, because we love a comeback story. We love a redemption story. 
it just sucks that it happens for the Patriots because all of you throwing dirt on them, this team is going to win 12 football games, 11 football games again. Oof. They're going to be double digits again. I, and no, there's I'm, I'm okay with the double digits. you can do about it. I've, I've got them 10 and 6. Uh, Matt said Cam won't be the reason, though. Uh, Matt Miller said I, yes, I think I think they'll go 9 and 7 because of the defense and lack of weapons. Cam isn't Tom Brady. Damian jumped in and said, hell no. Um, it, which it, You say that, but... You, you know, say you'd that. Be excited. You say that. If um, he was wearing that navy blue and orange, you you would be saying, "Hell yeah!" I mean, at New England. Look, they they get Miami at home to start, but then obviously your road games at Seattle, at Kansas City, at Buffalo, at the Jets, at Houston, at the Chargers, at the Rams, at Miami, and you have Baltimore at home. You've got Arizona. You got the 49ers at home. You got the Raiders. You got the Broncos. I mean, they they got some they got some difficult I games. I got them eleven and five. I, I got, got them 10 and eleven six. and five. And I think this team's going to be way better. The weapons didn't get better, but Cam doesn't throw to receivers the way Tom does. Cam yeah. uses his legs nonstop. All right. Yeah, I I think. Look, I look at it this way. I'm not worried about Cam. I'm not worried. You could give me a team of no names, and if Bill Belichick is coaching that team, until I see going him lose, eight. yeah, like they are going to have a winning record. Period. Yeah. Remember, until he, I see him he lose. Took he took Matt Castle who was literally just the dead-ass body of Matt Castle and won 10 games in the NFL. I think I think they were 11 wins that year. Well, yeah, they probably 11, They I were 11 and 5. They got to double digits. But, yes, mm. I'm telling you, this team is going to – and if – throw dirt on them. Go bet the Bills. Oh, my God, you know what Bill Belichick is doing right now. Everybody thinks that pretty boy is gone and we can't play football anymore, guys. Oh yeah! Nobody thinks we get it. Those boys from Buffalo. The first time they play Buffalo, Buffalo's a really good football team. I think they'll split with Buffalo. The first game against Buffalo. Don't care if it's in New England. Don't care if it's in Buffalo. They are going to beat the hell out of Buffalo. Uh, game is, one against Buffalo this year. They're beating the hell out of Buffalo. It is at Buffalo. It's the week after they play the 49ers, and it's That's in week gonna eight. Get ugly. Yeah, it's gonna right. be ugly. Uh, I'm just. I'm just telling you now. Remember, you hear to hear first. Damien jumped in and said, I would rather have a real quarterback like Bridgewater or Kaepernick than a diva. Okay. You would rather have a guy that uh, – uh, we're not going to get into that. Matt Miller we're said, not getting into that. Matt Miller said, the Bears have never had a 4,000-yard passer. They would take what's left of Peyton Manning right now. They would definitely take Cam. Yeah, I think so. They would definitely take Cam. <laughs> I think so. All and, right, and if they took Cam, I would make them the favorites to win that division immediately. Immediately, I think so because they got I weapons. I think that would be a twelve-win team. I think that defense would be better. I think all Allen Robinson would be spooging in his pants right now if he saw Cam Newton walk through that door. That a, a vengeful Cam Newton is yes, dangerous. with with just, just, a, just a just two big hefty bags of chips on his shoulders. Oh yes, oh yes. All right, let's uh, let's close out the AFC East. We should have did this in reverse order. We should have just did the Jets first. You can't end the show in the Jets. Well, we're not ending the show. Well, we guess still got right. the NFC. We can't yeah. end the show with the Jets. Um, it, and I'm just doing this in alphabetical order, man. I <laughs> know. I understand, but this is <laughs> pathetic. Go All ahead. right. Th- we, this won't take long, but we, we're going to give no. them the same amount of attention that we gave everybody else. Uh, the All Jets right. went 7-9 and nine last year. Their win total this year is 7. And I want you to see the difference here uh, because they think it's going to land right on 7. To go over is plus 175. Again, these odds are from Heritage. You can go over to sportsbookreview.com, click on odds, and you'll be able to see all this stuff, all the future stuff. Um, over is plus 175, and under seven wins is minus 205. Um, so I, they, they feel pretty strongly it will be seven or or lower. I will say that. But they, they, ain't, they ain't getting over seven. Is what they say. It, it's going to be seven or lower. It's yeah. going to be lower. Let's just say that. I, I would. I would think so. I would think so. To win the division, they are plus nine hundred. Yeah. Uh, sure. Damien jumps in again. Cam is a nobody who can't stay healthy and is scared to break a nail. Eh, we'll see, brother. He's not we'll afraid see. of getting hurt. He he's gotten hurt two years in a row. Yes. Carlos Gomez said, "With CJ Mosley opting out, who is there? Uh, who is even playing defense out there?" Um, well, I don't know about the Jets. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. But uh, but here's what we got. They brought in. Uh, underrated receivers to me, Brashard Perryman and Chris Hogan. Uh, they drafted Denzel Mims, so I think they got some weapons for uh, for Sam Darnold. They lost Jamal Adams, but McDougal could be okay. I think I think they feel pretty good about him. Uh, the defense, I think, is going to be fine under Greg Williams, regardless of who is opting out and who's not. I think they're going to be okay. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, I mean, do we have issues? Do we have... Um, 100%. 
Like, I, you know, there's I, a really good chance Le'Veon Bell's cut by week eight. I, I think you might be right about that. That everybody seems to be all these fantasy whatever gurus think that he is going to pop out this year. He might have a chance to come back and be explosive. I think it's insane. They're insane. I just, insane. I, I, so, so I don't think it is likely that he returns to elite status. I think he is pretty much done in the NFL. He went and got paid, and it, uh, he ain't getting well, along with Somebody else will give him a chance for cheap. He'll have to play for cheap. It'll have to be cheap, though. But and that's somebody else will give him a chance when he gets cut. He, 100%. I mean, he could end up in New England. But he he's just going to he's just gonna have to play for cheap for somebody else. But he, for some reason, Adam Gase don't like him. And we know that. When the head coach doesn't like you and the head coach calls plays, you're not going to play. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Darnold and the defense – it, look, I'm sorry, Darnold in that offense cut out the turnovers in the last half of last year. Uh, look, they went six and two when they finally started cutting out the turnovers. Uh, the schedule is is a little tougher this year. Look, Adam Gase in his second season, uh, we we had uh, Matt jump in and said the Jets are five and eleven. Either Gase gets fired or Le'Veon Bell kills him. Uh, I think Le'Veon will not be there at the end of the year. I think Gase will because, as Chris has said on the show multiple times, uh, the new GM is is his best buddy. Like, yeah, they hire they he's kind of got the name of the GM hire, which yeah. is just insane to me. It's it's only that guy's insane. firing him. No, no, no. I don't I don't think so. Not right now. Uh going through the numbers, by the way, offensive yards per play last year, four point six. That was dead F last. Yep. Last year in the NFL. That's not good. Defensive yards per play, however, five point oh is what they gave up, and that's number yep. five in the NFL. That's pretty good. The problem is is a lot of those defensive guys are gone. Yes, yes. Jamal that's, Adams. Darren lies the issue with that. Sure. Now I think they're still going to be okay because I trust Greg Williams on that side of the ball, but I I don't yeah, know I that the Greg's offense gets be fine. Uh, turnover margin was number twenty three, and that's for the entire year. If you if you look at the beginning, they were like dead last in the first eight yeah. games, and then they were pretty good in the last eight games, but they were so far behind the eight ball. Uh, they gave up point two per game. That was number twenty three. Look, I I I don't think that the Jets are like I don't think they're the worst team in the world. I don't trust Sam Darnold. I don't trust Gase. I don't like the roster. I don't like any of this stuff, but I don't think that they are just putrid. I've got them going 6-10. and 10. I've got them last in the division, but I don't think that they are the worst team in the NFL. I'll say it's that. A, it's a 3-13 and 13 football team. They are <laughs> trash as hell. Monster X Gaming 652 jumped in on Twitch. He said, uh, just fire Adam Gase. The only noticeable thing that's happened under his coaching was when Bill Belichick trolled him by wasting time. Uh, Damien said, Jets gas all the coke, uh, gaze all the, uh, wait. I don't know what to say. He said he's, de- he definitely isn't leaving. They gave him all the coke he needs. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think he's leaving either, which is why I've told people don't bet on him for first coach fired. Just no, don't do he's it. Not. He's going to deserve it, but he's not going to get it. He's going to get a third year. Yes. I agree. That guy's 100%. getting a third year. Three and 13, I think is, is maybe a little, little out there. Go, go ahead. I'm just saying, I, I've got them at six. I mean, that's still that's still under the seven. But this ain't one I'm betting. I mean, good gracious, minus uh, two hundred five. It's that's too much. Yeah, juice. the the, the ju- what what was the juice if you go the under? Uh, the under minus two hundred five. You hey, see, that's insane. I'm, I don't. It, I I, I feel good, good about going under. Go under, but, but I just don't want to waste money for an entire year. No, not for a minus two hundred five. I, yeah. I mean, it, where you're you spend ten bucks on it, you're only getting paid back a little over five bucks. Like, yeah, I just buy a bunch of silver. There you Over go. that time, it'll be a lot more than just getting.